Hello, and welcome to this mini gem from the Association for Elderly Medical Education. My name's Helen Chamberlain, and I'm going to talk about the tricky diagnosis of urinary tract infection in older people. What we're going to do is debunk some of the myths surrounding UTI in older people, remind you what to look for when taking a history from the patient or carer, touch on UTI as a cause of delirium, and look at how to interpret the MSU in the clinical setting. An important warning to start with, this advice does not apply to older people with systemic sepsis. This is a medical emergency and you must culture and start antibiotics in these patients as soon as possible. Sepsis does often arise from the urinary tract, but don't forget about the chest, soft tissue and GI tract as well. The first myth is that older people have a UTI until proven otherwise. Yes, it is common, but it's also overdiagnosed at a rate of about 40%. It's difficult to diagnose because of asymptomatic bacteriuria. The frailer the older person, the more likely they are to be carrying bugs in their bladder. This is important because overuse of antibiotics contributes to C. difficile infection. That's why there are local antibiotic policies. It also increases levels of bacterial resistance. Most importantly, if you jump to the conclusion a patient has a UTI without good evidence, you will miss other diagnoses. The best indicator of UTI is if the patient tells you their water burns or stings, that they go more often and rush to reach the toilet in time, and that these symptoms are of recent onset. The presence of fever or loin tenderness are good clinical signs that distinguish patients with UTI from those without. Acute urinary retention is also associated with UTI, but patients with chronic retention tend to have asymptomatic bacteriuria due to colonisation of the residual volume. Older people with frailty often present with one of the geriatric syndromes of a fall, confusion, incontinence or functional decline. This is incorrectly termed off-legs by non-geriatricians. The next myth is that presentation with such a syndrome equals a UTI. But in the largest study of UTIs in older people, the presence of a geriatric syndrome did not distinguish people with UTI from those without. So in other words, you need better evidence to support your diagnosis and for this you usually need an informant who knows the patient. If that person gives a history of a recent onset of lower urinary tract symptoms, then you are home and dry. However, collateral history is not without its pitfalls. Carers commonly report when the patient is not right, but you need to get them to explain exactly what they mean by that. If they're describing delirium, UTI may well be the cause, but again you need evidence of lower urinary tract symptoms to support that diagnosis. Carers also often report that someone smells of urine or that the water looks dark. These are not reliable indicators, so don't base the diagnosis on this point alone. Myth number three is that if an older person is confused, it must be due to a UTI. This is poor practice. Every healthcare professional should be able to assess if a patient has delirium or not. If the patient is not delirious, it's unlikely they have a UTI unless there is other evidence from the history or exam findings. If they are delirious, UTI may be the cause, but again, you need better evidence. Remember too that delirium has many causes and more than one may be driving it. There is a mini gem on delirium on this channel, so check it out if you want more information. The final myth is that dipstick testing is helpful in older people. It's not. Because so many older people have asymptomatic bacteriuria, many urine dips are false positives. False negatives also occur due to the presence of organisms, including Pseudomonas, that do not reduce nitrate to nitrite. The evidence on dipsticks has been reviewed by SIGN and concludes they should not be used in older people at all. A reminder here about patients with catheters. Anyone with a long-term catheter will be colonised after a few weeks, so should only be treated for UTI if they are systemically unwell. Remember to change the catheter too if they are septic. Dipsticks in these patients are uninterpretable, so don't use them. If a patient has a short-term catheter, please remove it as soon as you can to prevent infection. Which leads us to MSUs. Unfortunately, they're not a gold standard test. Asymptomatic bacteriuria is common, and so-called clean catch samples are usually anything but. Results must therefore be interpreted in line with the overall clinical picture. If you see a result like this in a patient with new lower urinary tract symptoms or with delirium and a fever, then crack open the trimethoprim. 
If, however, the patient was afebrile, well in themselves and with no change in function, then withholding antibiotics would be quite reasonable. If you see this result, unless there are symptoms, this patient should not be treated. If they are delirious and you can find no other cause after a thorough assessment, it may be worth treating, but this would be a clinical decision based on risks and benefits of antibiotics. This is the sort of result you see in asymptomatic bacteriuria. The last result is from a catheterized patient. Like the dipstick in this group of people, it's meaningless and any decision to give antibiotics should be based on signs and symptoms of systemic sepsis. So, to sum up, the diagnosis of UTI is based mostly on a history obtained from the patient or a collateral informant of recent onset lower urinary tract symptoms. A patient with delirium or another geriatric syndrome may well have a UTI, but do look for other causes as well. Don't rely on dipstick results, especially if the patient has a catheter, and interpret the MSU results in the context of the overall clinical picture. Here is some useful further reading on UTIs in older people from the Scottish Intercollegiate Guidelines Network and the Royal College of Physicians. Thanks for watching and please look at the rest of the AEME videos on this channel.